Hi, in this video, I'm going to be answering an email that I received from a viewer. I have not read this email, so I will do my best to answer it in this video. As always, if you have any advice for this person, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Okay, I'm going to read this email. The person's name is Corey. They include their last name, but I will leave all personal info uh, out of this email as I read it. The subject is really cool. How can I become a mathematician? Dear Math Sorcerer, hello. I hope you are well and I enjoy your YouTube channel. I'll try to be brief and respect your time and make as much sense as I can. I believe it is worth mentioning that although I was extraordinary throughout grade school, I struggled greatly as an undergrad, a fact whose shame I struggle to overcome. I graduated in 2019 with a bachelor's in mathematics from, and then he states the school, which is a great school, by the way, and I'll leave it out just for privacy issues, but really good school. Corey, I had a friend who went there. So Corey went to a very good school. My work experiences since then have been unrelated to the discipline and not very fulfilling. All the while, I still have to buy math textbooks. I still buy math textbooks to read for fun and then try breaking my teeth on problems in hopes of staying sharp. I think about great mathematicians and fields medalists like Cedric and Terrence and wonder what it must be like to be them. And to go and go to conferences talking with other mathematicians about things ordinary people struggle to understand. I think I've received recent confirmation of something I was deeply afraid of. Namely that after many years without one, I do have a dream after all. To be an academic mathematician. But I am not on track to achieve it because I had discovered it too late. And don't personally know of anyone who's done anything like that. And can't find anyone in the field to talk to. Don't know where to start. And know nothing about financing all of that. I'm deeply terrified by the facts that my dream is insanely difficult to achieve. I think I'm too much of a Pythagorean and too skeptical of business interests to be satisfied or, or interested in business applications of mathematics. So I'm not sure if I'd be happier doing any other job. I think I'll always be wondering what could have been if I tried. I'm sometimes asked in job interviews about when I was, a, when I was proud of a job I did in my workplaces, and I'm able to come up with something plausible. But really, my proudest moment was when I wrote a math paper for my partial differential equations class. It was rushed and imperfect, and I got a B on it. But even so, writing that paper was my real proudest moment, and I think I had fun too. I kept a copy of it to remind me to say about myself more often what I said about the paper. That it's not perfect, but I'm so proud of this. Wow. I'm searching for work again, and I'm feeling very lost right now and would greatly appreciate some advice. I know that if one exists, any path between me and my dream passes through grad school at some point. That's right. But do you think there even exists a path between me and my dream? And if so, what does it look like in the neighborhood's closest me? Questions that elaborate further include, but are not limited to the following. Is there an interim job that you think is ideal for someone who wants to study for an entrance to grad school for mathematics? What resources can help me gain the mathematical maturity I need to earn the recommendation of someone in the field. Would anyone in the field help me gain the maturity or do I need to gain the maturity first and then somehow find someone to recommend me? How could I find someone if I was so remarkable as an undergrad, such if I was so unremarkable as an undergrad, such that my own professors don't really know who I was? I desperately could use some guidance and I don't know where to go. Any advice would be appreciated. Sincerely, Corey. Okay, that was a long question, but I read through it and you know, the more I read through it, it's like the more invested I felt because this is a really good message. And it sounds like Corey uh, has found out that he really wants to do something else with his life and he doesn't know how to do it. Corey, I actually have tons of advice. I actually know a lot about this and I have a bunch of scattered videos. They're all really short, but I never really just talk about it. So I'll do my best right here on the spot to tell you what I think is a good decision for your situation. So it sounds like you already have a job, which is good. So first you asked about, you know, what job can you do in the interim? Because, you know, unfortunately we have to have money to live and money to eat. So I think maybe in the interim, what you could do is you could teach, right? Maybe get a job teaching because I think that's going to do two things. If you teach math at like a high school or something, that's going to sharpen your skills a little bit because even if you're teaching just basic algebra, it's going to get you back into it. It's going to get you talking about math. So that's one option. So I'm not saying that you should go teach high school math before you go to grad school, but I'm just saying that if you do want another job, it's an option. Another possible job is like math tutoring, although that's going to pay a lot less. So those are two possible ideas 
that you can play around with in your head and decide if they work for you. Again, I'm not saying you should do these things, but those are two options, right? Because you're working right now, you're working to live because you have to have money to live. You've already got your degree. You want to go to grad school. So if you want an intern job, that would be a good one. As far as uh, getting recommendations from professors, I actually do have an interesting idea for this. And this is just something that I thought of right now. This is not something <laughs> I've planned out or anything. So most universities, in particular the one you went to, probably has this because it's a really good school. But they have like tea time. Maybe, maybe your college had tea time. That's usually once a week where professors get together and they talk and they have tea. You want to like be present there. You want to start going back. You want to go back to college. You want to go to the colloquiums. You want to go to the talks. You want to go to tea time. You want to make your presence known. And you don't have to have something intelligent to say, right? Just show up. And if people ask you who you are, be like, oh, I used to be a student here. I just think this is really interesting. Because really, that's the best way to get to know those professors is go hang out with them, right? Go to the colloquiums. Go to the talks. Go to tea time. Show up. Be a normal face. Next thing you know, you're going to be a regular. Oh, that's that guy, Corey. Oh, yeah, he graduated from here a couple of years ago. Oh, he just hangs out in the math building. You can be that guy. That will at least put a face to the name. And so when you decide to apply to grad schools, then you can get some recommendations. So that is my number one advice. Because you could email your professors. You could. And you can email all of them. And you can ask them for recommendations. And... You might be able to get three recommendations, which is what you need for grad school. You need three. But honestly, if you didn't do so well as an undergrad, they might not be great recommendations. So my advice is go back to school, start hanging out in the college, start going to the talks, uh, maybe see if you can pick up a part-time job tutoring there um, so you can get to know the professors, get you back in the game. Um, you want to be in college physically, I think, and I think that's going to make a difference uh, with your network so that you can get those recommendations. As far as going to grad school, you also have to get in. And that's another thing. So there's all kinds of grad schools in the United States. Uh, I'm assuming you're in the US because you went to your undergrad in the US too, which is a great school. I had a friend in grad school, by the way, who also went to that school. So um, my advice would be um, to start reviewing your math right reviewing your math and reviewing all your classes and studying for the GRE so there's something called the uh, GRE subject test which is like I always call it like the great equalizer because it doesn't matter where you went to school if you get a good GRE score like it's gonna help your chances of getting into grad school again I want to emphasize I'm talking about the math subject test GRE math subject test now it's been updated multiple times I'm sure so I'm not sure what the latest one looks like but study for it and make that your priority study for that GRE uh, then get those recommendations by actually being on campus maybe get a job tutoring or something and you know start going to the colloquium and the seminars um, and I think I think with that um, you should be able to apply as far as grad schools, I mentioned again earlier that there's lots of them in the U.S. So there's there's two main types. There's what's called group one schools and there's group two schools. If you go on the Internet and you just go on Google and you type in like uh, group one schools, AMS, American Mathematical Society, you're going to get a list of the group one schools and they're broken up into public and private. So if you can get, if you can get into any of the group one schools, that's really good. That's life changing because those schools are really good. Then there's a ton of group two schools and there's a bunch more. So my point is, even if you don't get into a top school, there's tons. So aim for the group one. If not, try group two. And again, there's plenty more. So there are so many schools. So you just have to apply everywhere. As far as funding, it's expected. So like, let's say you apply to the University of Widgets. I just made that up. And it's somewhere in Texas in some small town and you get in. Chances are they're going to pay you a salary and they're going to pay your health insurance and they'll pay your tuition. So it's usually all free and in exchange you teach. So the challenge is getting in. Once you get in, your finances are taken care of. You can probably find a place to live. You'll, you'll be okay and you'll have health insurance. It's just about getting in. So start networking, I think, at, at your old school. Go to your old school. If they have those colloquiums, if they have those talks, if they have that tea time, Go to your college because it's a good one and meet professors there, interact, start studying for the GRE. And once you feel like you're ready to apply, apply everywhere. The bad news is, is if you have a low uh, GPA, uh, unless you have like a stellar, 
you know, um, GRE, it's going to be hard to get in. The good news is there's so many schools, you should be able to get in somewhere, right? I mean, there's a lot of schools in the U.S., and a lot of them don't even have that many applicants, I think. So if you show up as a decent applicant, I do think you can get in. And financially, remember, it's all covered, right? They pay you a salary. They pay your health insurance. They pay your tuition. So it's all covered. And if you want to take it a step further, <laughs> so that's what I did, is you could actually search for like apartments in the areas before you apply. So before I applied to any grad schools, I actually went online and looked for apartments. And like I knew or I had a rough idea of where I was going to live or at least a rough idea of what it would cost to live in a certain area. So there are certain schools that I didn't even apply to because uh, I would not be able to afford to live on the graduate stipend that they pay you. So when you go to the individual school websites, if you look at their programs, you'll be able to see how much they pay you, what the expectations are, and all of that stuff. So it just takes time. And again, start that networking process by going back to school and you know hanging out at those talks. You're going to learn more math. You're going to be around people who do math. Maybe get a side gig, side gig tutoring at the college or something like that. Anything to get your feet wet. Anything to get you back in the math game. If you do all that, I think you'll get in somewhere and I think you have a shot. So, um, But it's going to take some work. But you could do it. And, and once you get in, again, financially, it's not a problem. So it's all about you know, how much you know and how much you can handle at that point. So, uh, yeah. So if anyone has any advice for Corey, I kind of just ranted on. Hopefully my response made a little bit of sense. Again, I did not uh, prepare this video ahead of time. I just read the email and answered it as best I could. So if you have any advice for Corey, anything at all, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck.